Hello, my name is Dr. Jeff Aberle, and in this video we're going to cover plantar fasciitis, we're going to cover the heel pain that you can get from spurs, and we're going to cover Morton's neuroma briefly, and um, some of the extraneous pains that people can get along the top of the foot that nobody, nobody can figure out. You know, it'll, it'll all make more sense after you watch this video. You'll also see from watching this the, um, kind of where some of the ankle pains that people can have can come from, knee pains, hip pains, and then the, how the knee can actually become arthritic and need to be replaced, and how the hip can actually become a problem as well. And so hopefully this will make a lot more sense to you. Now what you're watching here is an animation I put together that explains um, some of these concepts. And if I actually zoom out a little bit on this, you'll actually see that the last little part of this animation shows the body going forward. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in here. I'm going to pause this for a second, and we're going to zoom in and just quickly define internal rotation of the hip, then back to neutral, then external rotation of the hip, and then back to neutral. So we have internal and external rotation, and then going down to the foot, we have pronation, back to neutral, and then supination, and then back to neutral. Now these, by the way, are, are normal motions, so I'm not exaggerating the inversion here too much, um, or the supination that you can do on your own. But plantar fasciitis would be more from the irritation along down, these, uh, down with these tissues being stretched, with this happening all the time in an extreme way. So you're even going further than this into a collapsed position. So I wanna make that clear. Um, that here I'm not showing extreme, extreme dropping of these bones. I and mean, people can have this so bad that these bones here come close to the ground, and it can it can invert so or pronate so bad, and so those types of people can have plantar fasciitis, and so this mechanism is one of the things that causes that. And then the forward posture also causes a big stretch down here. So plantar fasciitis is really the the overstretching of these tissues down here. So what are the tissues? Well, first one we're going to look at is the plantar fascia. And the poor plantar fascia, this poor thing gets blamed for everything. It's, um, it's kind of like people that have low back, low back pain, you know, and they, their friends all tell them what they think it is. And, you know, it's often diagnosed as sciatica, you know, via themselves or via their friends. And plantar fascia is usually the term given to anybody that has foot pain down at the bottom of their foot. And so this poor thing gets blamed for everything. Oh, you got plantar fasciitis, you got plantar fasciitis, you got plantar fasciitis. But the plantar fascia itself is actually a, um, a fairly thin but strong ligament. And you can see it here. And it connects all the way to the toes and goes all the way to the heel. Um, and here's another structure up above it. And this too could hurt. It's a muscle, it's right above that. I don't know if anybody could really distinguish between the two because they're so close to one another. So that's another thing. There's also another muscle in here, which we don't, which I hide, for, I'm gonna hide for most of this because it just gets in the way. But you'll see this muscle here too, covers a lot of that arch area and even down along to the bottom. So this might actually be your pain area, but which muscle it's causing the hurt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo that and hide those. And you also have to look at the arches of the foot, and there's just two of them here that I'm going to define for you. So this one here is called the longitudinal arch. And what you got to understand about this is this, it's like a bridge. And the longitudinal arch goes all the way through the foot, all the way to the other side. So this too would be considered the bridge effect in the longitudinal arch. So it's the whole foot. And then when you're looking from the front, this here is another arch. It's, a it's called the transverse arch, so it's a smaller arch, but still it's important. And if you think of this like in terms of an old term bridge, if you've ever seen a bridge that was made of stone, they always have wedged stones, right? And they put them together, they form a, um, a, a bridge. But the important part to that bridge now falling down is the fact that the end pieces on both ends, both sides of the bridge are firmly anchored into the ground. If those anchor points were allowed to slide, then the whole thing would collapse down into the water that you were trying to um, you know, go over the bridge on. So what, since we don't have that in a foot, you can't obviously plant these into the ground because you wouldn't be able to walk otherwise. So what uh, we have is we have these structures underneath which keep this whole thing pulled together and nice and flexible yet uh, functional. And when somebody is overstretching these tissues on a regular basis, 
for a couple different reasons, which we're going over here, then people can have plantar fascia pain and these tissues down here can hurt. And um, it can be worse if they've been sleeping and then they get up and put some pressure on their feet because during the night or even sitting for an hour or two, the muscles stiffen up a little bit and then when you go put pressure on them again, you gotta stretch them out. But that's abnormal, you shouldn't have that. So those are some of the definitions that we needed to cover. And what I first wanna do is show you this concept of this coupled motion of a torque converter. And this is pretty neat. So what I want you to see here is that when, we, when the hip comes forward, look what happens to the foot. The foot actually pronates. So hip forward, this whole thing rotates and the foot pronates. Go back to neutral. When the hip turns back or externally rotates, the arch comes up or supinates. Isn't that neat? So this is a whole coupled motion and basically what you want to think of the ankle is being a torque converter. So I'm going to unhide some arrows here and watch what happens here. This is pretty neat. So when the hip is turning, the foot turns in a completely different way. So it converts rotary torque this way into rotary torque around the foot this way. And there's some wrenches you can actually buy like this that do this that add a lot of functionality to, um, to a wrench that you'd use, for example, in a car to take a motor apart, an engine part. So this uh, torque, converting, torque converting ability of the ankle is crucial to understand and it relates to the, how the whole body functions. When I first learned about this, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is totally neat. And you can test this on yourself quite easily. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm just gonna have you stand, um, obviously not if you're in a car, but don't you be watching this in a car. Anyway, um, stand up and just turn your whole body to the left and your hips will kind of go along with your pelvis. And what you'll notice is that if you turn into the left, your right arch drops and your left arch comes up or supinates. And if you turn your body to the right, your left arch drops and your right arch comes up. Now one thing I'm showing you here is I'm showing you just the hip, knee, and ankle and those bones of the leg, the left leg moving here, okay? I've taken away the right leg so we don't have to try to work around it. But I'm just showing you the leg but you gotta understand that this would never work like this. It more works the whole body functioning together. So let's jump over and just cover that concept real quick. Now here's an animation that I'm showing you here, and this is as years going by for this person. And they are winding up, and I just showed you 60 years worth of damage. Isn't that neat? I'll show it to you in a few seconds. So we'll unwind that and go back to ideal. And now I have the arms and the chest cavity here and um, not the cavity but the actual sternum and the ribs and everything here, the chest. And I'm going to take those away because it's going to interrupt our discussion here because I really want to look at the um, skeleton. So as this person winds up, look at this. Okay. Now this is one example of billions of combinations that could happen with a wound up spine. So the chances of you looking like this are slim to none, um, you know, it being anywhere wound up in these positions, but the concept is exact. And so what happens to people is they get structural problems to their whole body, and at some point in their life, they could actually start developing plantar fasciitis pain because that's where their body basically can't take it anymore. It's being overburdened, overstressed all the time, and so they get plantar fasciitis pain. So that's what, we're, that's what I'm trying to, trying to show you here, how this all works together. So you see, one of, the, one of the problems in modern medicine and with all, practition, all practitioners of healthcare, realistically, is, this is what happens, is everyone gets focused on their, on their thing. So with medicine, it's usually they get focused on medications, right? And with uh, PTs, they get focused on muscles and strengthening and stretching them. Chiropractors get focused on the bones. Um, and, and all those are fine. There's nothing wrong with any of those. But very few people actually look at the whole structure. Now, what I want you to notice when I'm doing this here is look at the feet and the hips. Okay, now hips, I mean, not, not that hip. I should say pelvis. Look at the hips and pelvis, um, the feet and pelvis. Look at all these movements that are happening here. Just look at this left hip right there. Look at how that's turning in and out and the foot's going along with it and the knee's changing its position and the, pelv the pelvis, the iliac crest here are moving up and down. All this is happening during a certain phase of this person's life here. 
Now, it could be safe to say that a person at this point right here could have, let's just say, left plantar fascia pain. And as they wound up and got their bodies a little worse, the left, left foot pain went away and the right plantar fascia might, have, might start hurting. And this happens to, happens to people. I've had enough people come in over the years and I've, I've, they've said this. They said, yeah, I had, I had plantar fascia pain in, in the left foot, for example. And after a few months or whatever, that went away. And then it moved to the right side and now they can't deal with it. They, they can't get rid of it. It's been months and months and months and nobody's been able to tell them what, what's wrong and what to do. And I kind of chuckle because I know that with the work that I do, it's going to unwind their body and take them backwards in time, if you want to think of that. It's, it's like the ultimate in anti-aging. Now, it's not cellular anti-aging. It's structural anti-aging. So I'm going to take their body back in time through some of their old injuries. And that's what's neat about it. So if a person, say, had plantar fascia pain here on the left foot, and then they wound up and it went to their right foot, so it left their left foot and went to their right foot, and now they're in to see me, I can tell them that, yeah, I'll be able to get rid of your right plantar fascia pain, but don't be surprised if your left, left foot pain comes back again, because as I unwind them, they'll now get into that position where the left foot used to bother them, and that's good for them. That means I actually made their body mechanically better, but now the left foot is, it's, 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 the body's in such a posture with twists and tilts and everything else that the left plantar fascia hurts again and then I unwind them a little further and then that goes away. See? So as people unwind and get get things fixed that their body can't get things fixed that their body cannot self-correct, then their bodies unwind and go back through time and they get better. And the neat thing is about this mechanism by the way is that everything changes. So let's say you had some left or right plantar fascia pain, some left hip pain and some headaches and tight neck. As you get treated, all that stuff goes away simultaneously. You can't avoid it, actually. Um, you know, typically, if you went to a doctor and had three different areas of concern, they could kind of focus on one, maybe two at, at the same time, right? So they treat you differently. So anyway, um, but that's a little side note. So what happens here, just pay attention to that, then, that all this winding up that's going on here or unwinding, everything affects everything. And you can't separate it. The um, the body's just too interconnected. You can't even pull on, have, you know, have your toe pulled on and maybe get a little crack out of it without having it affect the rest of your body. You just can't. It just you might not feel it, but it that's how it works. It just affects everything. Everything affects everything. And so when we go back here to the plantar fascia stuff, you'll see how limited this is now in terms of its thinking, um, because the rest of the body isn't involved. But it still it makes the animation much more um, accurate. Okay, so from here, we kind of cover where the plantar fascia pain is coming from. And again, it's just overstretching of these tissues here. Get rid of the arrows. And so when you have these tissues overstretched over and over and over again, you can run into problems. Now remember, like I said, this, this animation here is kind of showing normal motion. So when you're walking, that arch is supposed to drop down. But let's just say that this was your natural arch just hanging out and not even putting any pressure on the foot. And then when you stood up and put pressure on the foot, the arch dropped even more. See, that can happen. This, this foot here is, is more of a normal amount of pronation that's available. And this is why putting an orthotic in your foot isn't the most logical, is you prevent all this from happening then when you put an arch support in there. You can't go down at all. And so people like their arch supports. And why do people like their arch supports? Why do people even get arch supports is a better question. Well, they usually get them because they have foot pain. They have arch pain or they have heel pain or they have something in their foot that they want to change. And if you change the body mechanically in any way, whether you just put a little heel lift in there or have a different um, you know, arch in your foot uh, or you get like the Birkenstock shoes, which are you know, a very undulating pattern in the actual foot and the, the shoe itself, any type of mechanical change can provide amazing relief because it changes the mechanics of your entire body. See what, what happens, let's, let's just say you do have plantar fascia pain and you got relief from the, from the orthotics. Well, what happened was you had a drop foot, you had some kind of pronated foot, the arch support brought you back up to either a more neutral position or somewhere, you know, somewhere around there. And you got the relief because now 
this tissue down here isn't getting stretched every time you walk. Well, is that good or bad? Well, your foot pain went away, so you'd think it would be good. But if I artificially take this, and let's just say this is a normal position for your foot, is that a good thing? Well, remember when we went back to that other, the other photos, the other uh, animations there, and we went through and had this thing all going around? Okay, your body uses the knees, it uses the hips, it uses the feet to compensate for other things that are going wrong. So my point is, is when if your foot is normally like this, and it, and then when you step on it, it goes down even further. If you go and artificially push that up with an arch, okay, what happens? Well, first your hip goes backwards, externally rotates more, but then the rest of your body loses that mechanism to compensate, and so you might hurt elsewhere. And people have this once in a while. They'll, they'll do arch supports, and they'll, they'll, their foot pain might go away, but then they, they experience pain somewhere else, and they're like, oh, these arch supports just. I'd rather have the foot pain um, than whatever they're dealing with with the arch support. And so you'll find a lot of people that don't like their arch supports as, as well as people that like them. So you don't want to artificially push this up. What you really want to do is fix the body so that the arch comes up on its own. And that's possible. I've seen plenty of people with flat feet or very low arches, and their arches start to restore after you start fixing the whole body. But you have to unwind them. So wherever they are, you unwind them. And as you unwind them, the arches can come and go. Higher, lower. As you unwind, just as you kind of see here. Now here I didn't really animate the actual arches. I was more interested in the rest of the body. But you get the point. Okay, so the arch on the left foot, for example, if it was really, really flat, might start coming up. And then as you unwind even further, it might go back down again as part of the compensate compens a compensatory mechanism of how your body is at that time and then it comes back up again and it, it just does all the stuff as your whole body unwinds and gets better and better so it's a very neat part of healthcare that you you got to understand and, and and this is where the medicine again is just they don't really see it and uh, most healthcare practitioners don't really see the whole body as uh, something that needs to be fixed together and then how to how to and it, the ones that do they're just not even sure how to do it and I used to be in that that boat I was trying to fix people on a global global level, but I didn't know how to do it. We just weren't trained well enough in chiropractic school as to how to go about doing that stuff. So um, that's kind of neat. It's kind of neat how that all works. And the other thing I wanted to just touch on real quickly was the um, forward posture thing here. So we're going to take this and we're going to look at this forward posture. Now what I want you to see here is when this goes forward, look at the bottom of the feet. Let me, get, let me just unhighlight that. Look how here the arch is nice and happy and as the body goes forward, the arch collapses. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Forward bodies are a big problem and you probably have a forward body yourself. And how you can tell is very simple. You go get a camera and you have somebody take a picture of you from the side and turn it you know, lengthwise so you can get the whole body in as much as you can. And um, what you want to do is you want to stand there, breathe in, breathe out, and let your body relax and slump. That's it. Then have them take the picture. And from that point, you can then look, and you'll probably find that you have a very forward body, if not even by a few degrees. But I want you to notice what happens to the arch. The arch just goes bleh. Just goes bleh. <laughs> and just flattens right out because the weight is now very much distributed to the front of the foot instead of the heel. So you're supposed to have more of your weight on the heel than in the ball of the foot. And you remember how I said in the beginning there with the, with the bridge concept here? So as that weight comes way over to the front here, these muscles are going to have to tighten up a lot more because this part of the body, this part of the foot is so much further away from where the weight's actually coming down. Isn't that neat? So the weight is supposed to be back more here, closer to the heel, where that's supposed to carry most of your weight, not this part. But as the weight comes forward, then this has to, it's going to flatten out. It's going to stretch the tissues underneath here. These are going to have to literally contract to hold this arch in the foot together. So it doesn't just kind of, you know, fall apart as if you, you know, took one of the structures of the bridge and just let it fall out. Again, the bridge would collapse into the water. So the forward posture is 
a part of the problem. Now, if you're thinking, well, I'll just stand backwards. I'll just lean back more into my heels. Well, then you're going to feel off balance. So where your body rests, you know, if it's there or there or there, it's always resting in a spot where it feels the most balanced, even if it's not the most upright. But there is a methodology, and that's what I use in my office, to actually get people back on their heels without feeling off balance. And it is the neatest thing ever, but it involves the full structure, the full body you have to work um, in order to get the person to come back on their heels. And with that comes better breathing, your, your back feels better, headaches go away, foot pain goes away, calf tightness goes away, IT band tightness goes, lots of things change. Now, not always quickly, but they change, and they change in a consistent and predictable manner. But the um, talking about the foot again, this is a big deal, and most people don't realize they have it. So let's say you're forward posture here, and you're going to get your foot massaged every week. Okay? And you get some relief from it, but you notice that it always comes back. Because the tightness down here has to be there. The muscles down here have to contract, and they have to tighten up, and they have to become more rigid in order to support the structure, the forward body structure. Well, why not just get your body weight back without feeling off balance? And these things can go, ah, and then they don't hurt again. That's what I'm trying to explain to you here is that the foot pain that you're experiencing is not just foot pain. And if that's the one thing I get, get you to understand with this video is that treating the foot alone is kind of like banging your head against the wall. Now, yes, you might get the pain to go away, but again, it, you might get that at the expense of winding your body up a little more. And so mechanically, you're actually worse off than you were beforehand, even though your foot pain's gone. And, and that's that's was hard for me to understand and get through my thick skull for many a years. It's like, well, pain relief? All pain relief is good. Well, it, it is it is because the pain's gone, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is good if the rest of the body becomes more wound up because you're just asking for more future problems. And um, then just real briefly talking about the Morton's Neuroma because that is another thing. And by the way, too, the generic pains that people get in their feet. See, sometimes you get people with pain on the top of their feet and, and nobody can identify what it's from. What's well, just as the foot, if the foot is in different positions, you can get different pinches, different stresses on these bones, different twists in the actual um, metatarsals here, and that can cause that mysterious foot pain. Uh, along with the Morton's Neuroma. Morton's Neuroma is um, due to a nerve that gets pinched through here. And that too is just from these weird foot positions that your body can be in due to the rest of the structure being uh, twisted and funky. So all too very, very simple to fix if you actually know how to go about fixing it, but it involves fixing the whole body. And um, that's the type of work that I do, like I said, and it's called Advanced Biostructural Correction. And, you know, most of you that are going to be watching this video is going to be played all over the world, and you're not going to be even more, anywhere close to me. But there is an entire group of advanced biostructural correction practitioners throughout the world, and we all know how to do this structural correction that I'm talking about. And so if you're interested in learning more about this or getting your body corrected in this, this methodology of, uh, of um, structural correction, then I'll leave the website down here and, and I'll link down more in the show me part of the show more part of the YouTube video. And you can see for yourself and find a doctor uh, or a practitioner closer to you and you can go to them and see what kind of results you can get. So, um, and, and by the way, if you have any questions, I'll leave your questions down in the comment section of the YouTube video. And I usually respond to these I usually fairly quickly and, um, and I can answer your questions for you or help you find a practitioner uh, or whatever you need. But I love answering the questions and I give detailed answers as you might have seen from some of my other YouTube videos that I've done. Uh, but again, my name is Dr. Jeff Aberly in Madison, Wisconsin, and thank you for listening.